Hello and welcome to Random Access PC Mag and Computer Shopper's PC Show. I'm Matthew Buzzy. This is John Burek, editor in chief of Computer Shopper, and we have a ton of uh, products here today. Mostly, as you may notice, some Razer products. Yes, we have a um, whole panoply of Razer stuff here. We actually don't have the whole Razer line, but close we to don't. it. We don't. We're getting there. Right, and actually, catch them all. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, conspicuously, a not Razer laptop at the end there that we'll get to in a little bit Ooh, too. Mister, yes, this right. is. Uh, well, let's pull a little bit off. This is the AORUS X9. It's kind of a fancy, exciting thing in its own right. Mm -hmm. um, and we also have uh, a graphics card for you, which doesn't really fit the rest of the theme, but it's gaming related. It's gaming. It's, yeah. it's extremely high end. Just coming out next. Next week, uh, you can't buy this yet, so we will talk about that a bit. It's audacious, just like the rest of this stuff mm -hmm. here. Um, the X9 actually just lifted embargo today, so we can talk about yeah, that. Yeah, this is brand new. So. Right, and um, these two razor, or I should say, three razor machines here are a whole other story in yes. and of themselves. So. Why don't we start with the uh, the big Razer the big, over here the on the left? The biggest one in the room, yeah. Yeah, so this is the Razer Blade Pro. Now, you probably have heard of a Razer Blade Pro before because there's a, a high-end, um, large-screen Razer Blade Pro which runs anywhere from three to $4,000, yeah. depending on configuration out there. This is the newer version of the Razer Blade yes. Pro, which comes in at twenty two ninety nine. So, so yeah. let's hand it off to um, yeah. Matt over here for a little bit of a tour. So, yes, um, you wouldn't probably notice off, uh, off the, you know, at a glance that it's that different, you might wonder why it's so much cheaper. So this one is $22.99. Uh, right. It's normally, as you said, like $4,000. So there are a few differences. You do get the, the same nice build and the big size, which is a lot of reason why you would go for this. Um, but it's $22.99, and instead of the 4K touchscreen, it has a 1080p display, mm -hmm. uh, 120 hertz refresh, um, non-touch. Right, um, but and it's it, still it's still good quality. It has a matte finish instead of um, instead of the kind of glossy. Shinier finish, which yet yeah, it changes the it changes the type of picture you get, but um, it's a smart change and the the quality is still very good. Right. So one of the ways that they saved a good bit of money on putting this together was the uh, GPU in there. Yeah. Um, the um, full so or I should say the you know the full fat um, Razer Blade Pro was that a 1080 or a, it was dual a GTX 1080? 1080. It was a single GTX 1080. Yeah. Right. And this is a 1060. So 1060 yes. has sort of been our go-to recommendation for gaming at 1080p, mm -hmm. which is the which resolution is what the screen. screen. They gave you. Right. So right. It, it makes sense. Um, it cuts down. A lot of people I know. I liked the build a lot when I reviewed it. It said it's probably one of the nicest pieces of technology I'd, I'd held or used. Mm -hmm. um, but when you give it a four thousand dollar price point, you you know a lot of people aren't going to be able to afford that. Right. So giving the same option uh, when they announced this, I was excited for those people who were interested because giving you the same option of the same build and everything, but lowering the price significantly so that more people can afford it, uh, I think is a smart idea. Right. Um, so you yeah, get a GTX 1060. It still has the 16 gigs of RAM. Mm -hmm. um, it's still fast. Still an i7 processor. Uh, the screen is, is gets a downgrade too, but in a way that's still useful to you. Right. Yeah. Um, to play at 4K, you know, you really are using the 1080 to the max, and right. even you're probably gonna be dialing stuff down a bit mm -hmm. depending on yeah, the game. Yeah, it's not 60 frames or anything. So right. You know, um, and still, it's this makes it still a big, uh, good big screen experience for the people who wanted the bigger right. screen and media creators who this is also aimed at. Not just um, not just gamers, so you mm -hmm. still get all that stuff. It's still fast. Um, we haven't we just got it in, so we haven't been able to put it through its paces testing wise mm -hmm. yet. So we can't say how much slower, or faster, or better it is. Um, oh, another thing that did change: the keyboard is not mechanical in this one. Right. Yeah, I was going to ask you how is this keyboard versus the full mechanical on yeah. the um, more expensive version? It's still nice. It still it feels like the regular blade, um, and it still is individually backlit, as you can maybe see. There's some we've got it on, on crazy, crazy mode effects right now. to, yeah, to yeah. react to my presses. Um, so yeah, there's just a bunch of little changes like that that help them bring the cost down, but really it feels just as it did. Um, so it's an option for people who are on a little bit less of a budget. Hmm. So the um, same CPU as in the original? It's i7-7700, um, I believe? I believe so. Like, yeah, yeah. And overclockable, right. Um, no, this one's not. Oh, maybe, not overclockable. Maybe the other one is. This is okay. 7700HQ, I believe. Oh, it is? Okay. I think, yes. So, Okay, maybe not HK. Maybe that's another difference, yeah. Oh, okay, fair enough. Yeah, so um, twenty two ninety nine mm -hmm. available now. Yep. Um, we'll be working up a review of this in the coming week, yeah, two weeks. Yeah. Um, big differences here between this and the original, different keyboard, different GPU, and the, and low the screen. screen. Yeah, that, right. that's what's saving the price. Still a premium product, it's still an over $2,000 laptop. Not saying this is all of a sudden like the most affordable budget thing, but mm -hmm. it's much more attainable to people who are willing to spend somewhere in that range. Right, so. yeah, I mean, close to half the price. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, there is that. And I mean, the layout, you know, remains pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. And let the thing I love best, the little roller in the corner the there. The volume scroll bar is one of my favorite things, um, both for this and on full desktop keyboards. That yeah, now like when I use keyboards that, that don't have that, uh, 
I really miss it, and it's nicely located right above the touchpad. So if you're in the middle of doing something and something's not loud enough, easy flick. Right. Um, it's it's a really nice addition that I kind of want to see on more things. Yeah, like Corsair does that on a lot of their keyboards, mm -hmm. which is just uh, a lovely yeah. thing. And we've seen some imitators doing it as well, but mm -hmm. having it in and a laptop. it doesn't feel cheap on this either, and it has its own LED, because of course it does, because it's Razer. <laughs> it has to. I think it's right. obligated to. Fair enough. Let's move right. on to these smaller guys. All right, so let's take this one, and you can put them over there. In the, right. uh, yeah, I'll toss them to the side here. Right, so we've I got... I won't throw it. Those are, no, please don't. So we've got two similar yes. looking machines here. One looks like it's monochrome, sort of the 1910 version of yes. the Razer. No, not really, but um, <laughs> the um, gunmetal version of the Razer Blade Stealth. Now, yes. the Stealth is uh, Razer's ultra-portable uh, laptop. Not really gaming, per se, as it comes out of the box, because it does not have dedicated graphics. Right, and that's like a weird thing for people to wrap their head around when they first uh, made these uh, a year, maybe two ago, um, that everyone assumes it's Razer, it's gaming. This is right. not, not the case for these. Right. It's I simply mean, the same nice design. Mm -hmm. to take around with you and do everything else on. Right. Well, the thing is, is the idea here, you've got Thunderbolt 3 on it, and Razer also makes an external, we don't actually have it here, an external graphics card box called the Razer Core. They yep. actually just released a new version of yeah, that yeah. Um, last week or so. I think it's $499? Yep. Yeah, yeah, as before. It's called the Razer Core V2, mm -hmm. I believe. And um, you can plug that into one of the Thunderbolt ports on the side, yep. install your own graphics card, and turn it into a gaming machine. So yes. you have gaming options on this while carrying this around, yep. like a ultra portable notebook like the ultra portable notebook that it is yeah so what's the difference here between the two of them i mean one of them is gunmetal color so, yeah. yeah so there's been stealth before these are not the first stealth but they are different um there's been a couple iterations and these are the most different since the launch one so the 13.3 inch screen size that you're seeing is brand new as mm -hmm. well as the gunmetal color what uh, was it before it was 12 and a half 12 and a half um, you can still get the 12 and a half size it only comes in 4k though I so see. it's 12 and a half 4k or uh it's 13.3 and it's qhd plus right oh actually um, one thing i should point out is if anybody has any questions about these units or any of the yes. units that we're showing here please, please. bring the, bring them on um, by all means. And someone's already following yeah. up on that. Oh. What are the keyboards like on those? Um, uh, so they're non-mechanical, um, but they do feel kind of nice to type on. I think it might be my imagination. It's possible it's my imagination. There's a little more key travel than there was on the older version. I think I dinged the last one for being a little shallow. Uh, they feel pretty nice. More so, the keys are individually backlit, uh, just like on the bigger Blade Pro. Um, so you can customize these to do whatever you want. Every that, key can that's be different on the gunmetal, though? Uh, yes. Yeah, so this version is uh, customizable. Every key has different colors. The gunmetal version only has white backlighting. So oh, okay. some small difference. But the, so the gunmetal version is a bit more understated. It doesn't have the lime green logo on the back. It's just etched in silver. Um, some people might like that more for like a business environment where they feel like standing out a little weird with the green. Um, so, you know. Options, options for everybody. We have another question. Ah, can you get a matte screen for it? Uh, it does not have a matte screen. It's either this, and it's a really, really nice screen, I should say. I don't know if it's coming through on camera or not. Um, right, yeah, it's Ixo, using Igzo, right. Igzo, it's really vibrant. Uh, it's touch, um, it's super sharp. It's 3200 by 1800 resolution. Mm -hmm. um, it looks really nice, it, it feels really nice. Um, and yeah, I, uh, it, there's no matte finish like there is on the Bl new Blade Pro. Um, so it is a little shiny, but mm -hmm. it kind of makes the picture pop a little more. Oh, we have okay. another question. Oh. What are the graphics cards on these? So, yeah, as we're saying, there are no it, there are no discrete graphics. It is integrated, so it's just the one that's built into the chip. Yep. Um, and Intel, so Intel HD 620, 620, I believe. In this case, yeah. yeah. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And that means that you can't really play games on it. Uh, simple stuff, 2D games, simple games. Right. Web-based games or older games, sort of dialed yeah. way back. Right. Um, so, what is, what is the resolution on these? These are all are all QHD, QHD at this plus, size. Yeah, so QHD yeah. is what it's is it? 3200 by 1800. 3200 yeah. by 18. Okay. So, um, so, you know, it's, it's super sharp, um, but yeah, you're not going to want to do gaming on these really, unless you, as you were saying, connect it to the core, you put an external uh, graphics card in that, you connect it through USB-C, um, and then you have a gaming system when you're at home. But right. on the road, it's just a general use sort of laptop. There's a slightly bigger version of this, the regular Blade, not Stealth. Those right. are the gaming systems. That's a 14-inch, uh, that's what has the discrete graphics, which has a 1060 in it, and that's what you're going right. to play with. I mean, for some really old games, though, like if you're playing, say, like original Counter-Strike, Half-Life, something yeah, yeah. from 10 years ago, 12 years ago, you can dial it back, and mm -hmm. you can play it on Intel integrated graphics yeah. at this point. Or something I mean, new, like, like that's not as graphically demanding, like Hearthstone, you could, you could right. launch on an integrated system, no problem. Right, um, yeah, it's just for the, uh, the sort of AAA games that really have major 3D requirements. Yeah. You're not going to get very far mm -hmm. with a integrated graphics system like this. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. And to run down the rest of the specs real quick, we have a, it's a 7500U uh, processor, mm -hmm. which is the same that was on the old 12 inch, 12 and a half inch model. The 12 and uh, right. Same uh, Core i7 7500U. Um, they are coming out with the new generation uh, quad core processors, so those are coming down the line. Right, so, that's the KB Lake R mm -hmm. that they're right. So, uh, okay. So there's that uh, uh, coming out, but um, the value of this is 1399, mm -hmm. um, and that's the base model that comes with 256 gigabytes of storage, and they all have 16 gigs of RAM also, which is okay. pretty good. Um, that's a pretty good value, I think, at $1399. Right. Uh, we were comparing it to something a little more expensive, like the Dell XPS 
uh, 13 touch, which is the same size, same nice screen. They're really similar, but that's like a 1699. Right. And they're almost neck and neck. So between the nice build and the fun stuff like the key lighting, right. uh, it's a really good proposition. Uh, right. Proposition. I mean, the Dell is sort of like more of a business machine. I mean, this is if you're buying a Razer machine, you're going to have you know the Razer logo on the cover. Yeah. It's an attitude statement. Mm -hmm. It's a you know sort of uh, different vibe. Yeah. You know than uh, something like a power slash business portable like the XPS 13. It's just Definitely. you know different strokes. Yeah. yeah. We have another question. Oh, to clarify, are these touch screens? They are touch screens. Yes. Uh, Look, <laughs> I can't show you anything. Start menu. But yeah, he's not he's start menu. It. Right, yeah, um, they are touch. Yeah, they're touch screens. Yeah, if it was Windows 8, I could swipe in, I suppose. Well, no, there we go. We there got there. Got yeah, going on. there you go. Another question. Another related question. How important is the touch screen for you? Do you feel like you use it a lot? Um, I do. I think it's one of those things like you maybe don't think you would use it a lot or you don't think you do use it a lot. But when you use a non-touch laptop, sometimes you poke at it and it doesn't do anything. You know, right. Yeah. yeah we see, we see a lot more laptops than most folks. So once you get used to it or yeah. once you get used to using it, you totally. notice when it's not there. Yeah. Um, so it, it's useful enough that it doesn't like it doesn't hurt to have around. Um, mm -hmm. You'll I, clean your I, screen I, more, of course. Yeah, sure. It's right. especially useful on convertible laptops and other things. But Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Another question. Huh. How's the touchpad? The touchpad is super nice. Um, it's it's redesigned to be precision, and I think by that they meant the the, mic, the Windows the uh, Windows touchpad precision right. touchpad. I right. think that's what they yeah. meant. Um, mm -hmm. Either that, or they just meant precision. It's more precise. It does feel super nice either way. Um, it's really smooth scrolling. It's also made of metal. Uh, it's not loose or chintzy in any way. Um, like the keyboard, it's it's nicely built. The right. speakers too, they get loud. They don't get super loud. You're not going to fill the room, but you're also not going to watch a movie right. on a 13 inch screen from that mm -hmm. far away. So they're Really perfectly right. loud. So you for what did you run mean. benchmarks on the black version of this, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and this is this is full review. My full review will be up really soon. Okay. Uh, big recommendation on it. Though. And in terms of um, for it being a 1060 machine, did it sort of perform in parallel with other 1060 machines that you've tested? Do you recall offhand? Yeah, that one. 1060. Yeah. yeah. So this is a 1060. Did it perform sort no, of in it's parallel? Integrated. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of the Blade. The Blade Pro, yeah. yeah, you see, it's, you see how easy it is to mix it's them up, right? Mix them up. I got it all. I got it all up here. Yeah. No, um, <laughs> the performance, being the 7500U, was right. about what we had. Uh, again, last time, the last model matched up pretty, pretty easily and smoothly. Right. Also, like eight hours of battery life. Right. Um, that's one thing I put it in the con column on review. Technically, it mm. wasn't as like a, it's battery life is bad because it's not eight hours is fine. That's all day battery. Right. Um, you just get some competitors getting 10, 12. The MacBook Pro gets 16. Mm -hmm. So you know. Right. There's some give and take, um, right. but eight hours is, is perfectly right. fine for, for an ultra portable so situation. Why, so why would you go with this versus the 12.5, or why would you go with one or the other if um, you were in the market for one of these? I think the bigger screen size makes a difference. It's not a bigger laptop. It's mm -hmm. They kept the size the same by making the bezel smaller, so you're ah, getting more okay. screen real estate um, for the same size laptop without adding weight or size, and it's just under three pounds. Uh, it's, it's not heavy. Um, the... Screen size makes a difference, I think. Um, mm. 12 is a little, it's not small. Right. Especially if you're going to bring home, bring it home, connect it to a core and play games on it, and right. not hook it up to an external monitor. 13.3 is, is definitely right. preferable. And is it different resolution at the 12.5 versus 13.3 now that Now that the 13.3 yeah. exists, you can only get the 12.5 at 4K. Ah, OK. Yes. Interesting. OK. Yeah. yeah, so 4K is at that screen size. Sort you of don't a, really you, need it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you have to want it. Let's yeah, put it yeah. that way, right? Um, okay. Also, yeah, you, this comes with 256 gigabytes SSD base, but it goes all the way up to a terabyte, but the price also, in doing so, goes all the way up to like $1,900, right. so. Fair enough. Yeah. So, Razer Blade Stealth. Stealth. Not Razer Blade, not Stealth. Not Razer Blade, Blade, not Razer Blade Pro. Razer Blade, Blade Stealth, stealth. Yes. right. So we have the black version, the gunmetal version, 13.3 screen. Mm -hmm. Both available now. Yes. Now, what's going to be the deal with the uh, KB Lake R, the eighth generation core version of this? Is that going to knock that one off? Or um, knock it's, the difference is it'll be faster, but it starts at sixteen ninety nine, I believe. Okay. So it's uh, several hundred dollars more expensive for roughly the same laptop. So I feel like between this one, which for our price tiers, this is just into the high end mm -hmm. pricing range, um, being the high end system, but having almost all the same things as as laptops more expensive than it. Uh, the 1399 value makes it a really good value. So, right, so uh, sort of the sweet spot machine yeah. of, the, of this of this bunch. Yeah, you could go faster if you need it, but it's right. not one of those things that's like essential. So, mm -hmm. fair enough. Yeah. All right. Well, we got our blade on here. So, we um, plenty of blade on. There we are. Okay. Uh, so there we go. Boom. All right. And I'll give you this guy. All right. So, ah, well, it's actually not that heavy. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> so what is this? This is the Aorus X9 from oh. uh, game company Aorus, okay. which is the same company as Gigabyte, as you may or may not know. Right. Uh, there's a little hidden secret about this relatively thin laptop, John. What's yes. inside it that makes its thinness impressive? Right. It's actually got two GPUs in it. So um, it's a, a GTX 1070 twin yeah. or SLI machine mm -hmm. with um, also i7. 
Uh, two SSDs, although there are a couple of configurations, you can get two SSDs or one SSD in a hard drive. Mm -hmm. um, and it's about eight pounds. I mean, it's thin. I mean, it's also a little bit hefty. It's certainly not a razor blade itself. Yeah. Um, but considering that you've got a SLI configuration in here, 17.3 screen, a mechanical keyboard. It's um, like eight pounds. Which yeah, that's, not, which not is, sounds may sound heavy for a laptop in a larger sense, but for a 17-inch gaming laptop, that's really stacked. Yeah, that's pretty good. actually pretty darn good. Um, we just got this in yesterday. We've been putting it through its paces. Um, Matt's spent a little more um, hands-on time with it than mm -hmm. I have. But um, to give the uh, quick rundown on it, the keyboard um, claimed mechanical. What do you think? I think it is technically mechanical. Uh, we're not the biggest fans of it. I think they feel a bit weird. I don't can't really quite explain how. Well, there's a lot of travel. They're very plasticky, and there's a lot of travel. Um, once you actually get into a flow of typing, it's a little different. But they don't they don't feel they don't feel great. Right. Um, yeah, there is, that's a, a lot more vertical travel than yeah. you'll find on most gaming notebooks, and there is a clackety-clack going on there. Yeah, once you really get into a rhythm, it's, it's pretty satisfying. They right. also are also all individually backlit, so you can have all sorts of effects going across. Um, same mm -hmm. for this LED bar, which is a little silly, a little fun. Um, yeah, you can make it show the battery life. You can make it show the GPU temp and CPU temp and workload. Um, yeah, there's like an interface there that lets you shift between yeah. um, what that's actually indicating. Yeah, um, and there's some lights on the back as well as some lights up front. Um, you can make all those dance. There's a DJ mode, a music mode. Right, uh, yeah. Yeah, where you can have it beat and pulse to the music, which is kind of funny. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we, uh, we actually had a little bit of fun with that yesterday. Yeah, yeah it's a um, pretty stacked notebook. Um, it's only available in two configurations, which are actually very similar. The mm -hmm. only difference between them, I should say two configurations in the USA, um, only available... Um, with either, I guess, two SSDs or an SSD and a hard drive. Yeah. And both of the configurations are in the, I believe, 3600 to 3800 range. This is the more expensive with two 512 gig SSDs. Yeah, how much is this one for? Uh, 37, let me just check my notes here. I believe it's 37, yeah, 3799. This one is only sold at Newegg. Right. Um, there's going to be a more widely distributed one, which is 3649. The only difference is the... Um, you get a hard drive. Right, two one SSD and a hard drive. Yeah. yeah. So the um, X9 there, the screen is a um, 4K. I believe not G Sync, not G Sync, but um, and what's the? Um, it's not uh, high refresh. It's just sixty hertz, 60, right? Yeah. Okay, so you could pretty much with two ten eighty, excuse me, ten seventy. Twenty. I don't actually remember. Uh, let me check my notes here. Oh, um, check that. Check that factoid. Yeah, I don't have anything down there about it being. Because I remember uh, it was not G Sync, so it was, might have been higher because G Sync would have limited it to sixty. So that right. was the reason I have it as a higher. I right. Thought. Mm, could I'm be gonna, wrong. We'll yeah. double check that. Yeah. Um, we will ever, detail, but, yeah. yeah. But one um, of the things to bear in mind about that is, is that you, you have two 1070s in there, right? Which can push some pretty pretty high refresh yeah. rates. So you wouldn't want it capped at 16. Right. Yeah. So I mean, that may we'll, when we get our uh, full reviews of this up, we'll want to get into the um, refresh limitations of the screen because you may ha be leaving a lot of frames on the table, so mm -hmm. to speak, you know, sort of overperforming by getting two 1070s. Now, yeah, yeah. Uh, in terms of having two 1070s, and whether it's a laptop or a desktop, what are your sort of feelings on that versus, say, having one 1080? Sure. So, yeah, the thing is, two 1070s is going to get you a little closer to 60 FPS 4K than one 1080, I think. It's probably pretty close, but it, being on a 4K screen, which, yeah, you can turn the resolution down in the game and get whatever frame rates you want. If you want to just do 1440p, that's an option. You'll get more than 60 frames. Right. Doing two cards just to do two cards, which cuts down on battery life, adds complications to SLI uh, mm. with games with, with SLI because not every game plays nicely with with two graphics cards. Right. It mm. adds some complication that not necess that doesn't necessarily give you the benefits. I think. Um, also, the battery life. Yeah, I assume we, that's weighted heavily because of the, the two cards, and it's not it's not been very good in our testing. Right. Well, I mean, we did a uh, battery rundown. I mean, that is one aspect of battery life, and we got a little over an hour playing back um, yeah. battery on power save mode. So it's um, pretty short, even by you know our typical gaming laptop standards. Yeah. So this is not the kind of machine where you're going to be doing a lot of roving gaming. Off yeah, the which plug. sucks because it's it's relatively light and thin. So you're like, all right, well, I can take it with me. You're not going to game on the go. You're just going to take it carry with it. You. Right. Yeah. Once you get somewhere, then you plug it in. Exactly, right. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's mostly going to be your 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 desktop replacement right. the system. Um, right. But that said. I mean, getting two um, high-end GPUs in a system this thin is, yeah. is pretty... It's, it's yeah. not aggressively loud or anything like that. It's normally loud. Yeah, the fans definitely rev up when you're playing games, but mm -hmm. I, I didn't think it was, like, offensive in any way. Right, yeah, it actually has four fans inside. From what the uh, reps at um, Aorus slash Gigabyte were telling us, mm -hmm. it's um, a quad fan arrangement, and you would think that having that many fans running inside of a... Uh, uh, high-end laptop would be noisy, but I guess they're spinning low enough, you know, even yeah. when stressed, that... Uh, 
you know, it's really not terribly loud. So and yeah, if you take a look at the bottom, that's definitely you, the coolest bottom of a laptop I've seen in a long yeah, time. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, which you can take off, right, to install a different hard drive in the bay if you if you wanted. Yeah, they um, we, have, we actually haven't tried to tear the bottom off yet, yeah. but we were told that it's actually a user upgrade to get to the other uh, drive bay. Yeah. Yeah, so that's uh, kind of a, a you know cool aspect of it. Um, oh, it's kind of a car looking car hood type type thing. Yeah, the reps told us that it's um, both uh, inspired by Lamborghinis and stealth fighters. I would like to see actually a Lamborghini stealth fighter. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure what that's yeah. about, but. Yeah, but um, that's what we got going on yeah. there. So you know, if you're a supercar fan, if mm -hmm. you're a you know military jet fan, you're covered. If you're if you like Eagles, if you like Eagles, also yeah. also covered. Um, yeah. yeah, no, so. it's it's a uh, it's a it's a nice system. It's expensive, so you have to kind of weigh: Do I need the two cards? Do I need you know this right. and that? But it's not. It's there's nothing bad about it. No, oh, yeah, per totally. Se. Yeah, and actually, the keyboard might be a matter of um, you know taste. Yeah, I mean, that's always up. I for actually, opinion. I think I was a little more um, sort of. Uh, comfortable with it in that it had a lot of travel. Sure. I mean, it had a little, the keys had a little more of like a hollow feel, I guess, when you click on, yeah. when you type on it. But then again, if you're spending four grand on the laptop, you probably want to try and find one of these somewhere to try out before you put down your yeah, money. Yeah, I would hope so. Yeah, so there's that. So um, this is the Aorus X9, um, going to be $37.99 from Newegg in this configuration, or thirty-five. Uh, excuse me, uh, thirty-six fifty dollars um, in the more widely available configuration with uh, hard drive and SSD. And we have, and we have a question. Someone's asking if it could run Deus Ex Mankind Divided in 4K. Hmm. Uh, I'll leave that yeah, with you. Yes, not at 60 frames. Mm -hmm. um, you might get, you probably get over to 30, but uh, probably, probably 40, 50 frames on that game. Uh, right. It's a fairly new, demanding-ish game. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we've started running a few um, games on this, and we've had some mixed results, and we haven't done Deus Ex, but for instance, like we tried Far Cry uh, mm. Primal, and that was an interesting case in that it showed... Um, the issues with SLI that you see, we actually got the same um, frame rates at every resolution we tested at, so it wasn't yeah. scaling with SLI, whereas other games were scaling. Other games were, I think like The Division and Tomb Raider were all getting like 50 and 50 frames range. Right. If Rise of the Tomb Raider, yeah. yeah. And, mm -hmm. and that, uh, that's pretty good. That's actually pretty good. You, there's the people out there who's going to notice um, that's not 60. It's more so if it dips a lot than if it's truly at 60. Right. If it's going to go up and down and fluctuate, you're going to notice right. the chop and the slowdown. So that's yeah. a little bit of a difference. Well, story. I think that, oh, go ahead, sorry, no we have a question? question? Yeah. How many other uh, laptops out there are there that have like two video cards? Um, I can think of. I can think of. Yeah. The well, there's the MSI. The, oh, yeah, so MSI has one. It's the uh, GT um, 83 VR, uh -huh. which I believe is going off the market actually, and that one's significantly thicker. It's got a. It has a, the mechanical keyboard's like. Legit. Yeah, like it's like it's an actual <laughs> desktop mechanical keyboard and it's an 8-inch screen. Yeah. Um, that one you can get with, I think, two 1080s or two 1070s. Mm -hmm. um, Origin had Origin a dual 1080. Eon 17X, uh, the right. Eon 17 SLX is right. a two 1080 system. Right, and there's no skew of the Razer Blade Pro with, with, two, with no. twins, right? No. no. So who else would have? I think that's... Does Asus have one? Uh, a twin? I don't think so, no. I think only single 1080. Yeah, yeah so there's only a few of them out there, and for... You know, certain reasons. I mean, again, battery life. You know, yeah, it's going to take and, a hit. And, and, and that point, SLI support. Yeah, yeah. And to that point, like uh, props to them for getting it again so thin because the the origin and that is two 1080s. Yes, uh, but it's that laptop's about this thick. Yeah, I mean, you can probably like ten pounds. Put two of these on top of each it other. It has two power bricks. Yeah, and they're like enormous. So this has one. It's on a decently sized size. Yeah, so, that is a good point. Yeah. yeah. Because, yeah, you can't go very far with this without the power bricks. And with the Origin, I mean, you were carrying... Two, it's all, it yeah. was, I think it was like 15 pounds altogether. We were joking around that, like, literally yeah. the power bricks weighed more than a lot of laptops. That we, Legitimately. Yeah, true. whole laptops yeah. that we have. Yeah. Um, so we um, weigh more than the Blade Stealth. Right. Yeah, so if you're considering something like this and you're looking at SLI in a laptop, or for that matter, in a desktop, you probably want to look at the games that you um, actually yeah. play and see, just check online forums and just sort of the, mm -hmm. the general you know, buzz as to whether they support SLI well yeah. or not. Some of them... Yeah, it's really hit and miss. Less so lately, too, uh, is right. support consistent. Um, it, that seemed like the way the market would go for a while, that like two cards, everyone's going to love SLI. Uh, last couple of years, I've kind of been, eh. Yeah, and then you've seen, even with um, NVIDIA and AMD, you know, sort of, they're both, they're de-emphasizing um, you know, multi-card configurations, yeah. and as a matter of fact, NVIDIA is limiting it to two cards, period, yeah, right, at this yeah. point with Pascal, so... Um, increasingly less developer buy in yeah, on new cards. The new yeah. individual cards are so good that it's kind right. of. Right. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it's really, this is a statement machine. I mean, I don't believe that AORs or Gigabyte expect to sell, you know, a million of these. Yeah. I mean, it's, first of all, they're the price, but yeah. it's a demonstration of uh, engineering and mm -hmm. what's possible in, you know, a uh, slim form factor using. Um, you know today's Pascal technology, and not even um, dialing it back like you do with something like Max Q. Right. Yeah. You know, it's, it's full, full on cards. Yeah. yeah. These are desk, two you know, desktop equivalent 1070s in there. So it's if you want to say you have a you know a killer machine in this um, 
form factor. There just aren't a lot of other choices. Yep. Yeah, so 3799 Aorus X9. Um, keep it near a power plug, but otherwise it's a great machine to play with. Yeah. And try the keyboard before you buy it. You may like it more than, than Matt did. Yep. All right, so X9. X9. Excellent. So we have one more uh, piece of hardware here, a little uh, bit of desktop action here. Let's bring this out to the center of the table. Um, Boom. This just came in, so we haven't done any testing on it yet, but we just thought we would um, ogle it because it is Why what not? it is, right? Um, it's not available for sale yet. Um, you'll be able to buy it, from what I understand, uh, from Newegg and other um, e-tailers hey, early did next you read, week. Did you, sorry, did you read the label? I just want to make sure you follow that advice. Oh, I didn't. Play hard, stay silent. you got to okay. play hard, you got to stay silent. That's just what you got to do, according to this box. I wouldn't want you to go any further. Yeah, John's done for the show. He's quiet now. I'll just continue on, which is unfortunate because he knows more about this than I do. So I guess I'm just going to have to guess from here on forward. Uh, it's a graphics card, all right. John, please please come back to me and help me out and tell me about this. Oh, so uh, oh, okay, so I don't have to be silent anymore? You don't, you're, you're okay. Oh, it says it on the card. Oh, it says it on there? OK, so now you have to be silent. <laughs> right, there we go. All right, well, here we go. Um, first, I'll see if I can open this. Um, this enormous video card. Oh, OK, so let's get the uh, packaging out of the way. So that's one of the bigger video cards that you'll ever see, I suspect. Um, does say work hard, play silent. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, so this is the, uh, excuse me, uh, MSI Gaming, bleh. okay, start again. MSI GeForce GTX 1080 Ti Gaming X Trio. Where's the Trio come from? Not because it has three GPUs on there, although we kind of wish it that did. That would be kind of great. That would be kind of great. Um, three fans three is fans. what it this is. This thing is huge. This thing is really, really big. Ridiculous. So we'll take the sticker off there. Um, now, as you would expect from something that's this large, it's going to be factory overclocked. So, like most MSI cards, it comes both with a um, uh, sort of a stock mode, a silent mode, and a um, overclock mode. Excuse me, a uh, silent mode, a gaming mode, and an overclock mode. Mm -hmm. um, the overclock mode is kind of ridiculous on this card in that the base clock in overclock mode is the boost clock in silent mode or stock mode. So you're looking at a Pretty severely overclocked card right out of the box. If you don't want to mess around with GPU overclocking, just buy this, shove it in your system. It's for scale, I just need to show Oh, that you is an excellent idea. <laughs> <laughs> so this I card is actually. I get that point across. Uh, yeah. I can't express enough that it's literally as big as this laptop. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's like contrast there, just saying. Uh, <laughs> the, um, and like three times as thick. Right. So this card's going to go on sale next week for $7.99. I mean, a typical 1080, we'll stand it up over here because uh, my arm's getting tired. Um, mm -hmm. Stay. Um, it's going to go on sale. MSRP is seven ninety nine. I mean, this isn't the kind of card that um, you know um, crypto miners are going to go running after. It's mm -hmm. not you know probably a cost efficient solution for that. So yeah. maybe it'll actually be available for a <gasps> while. You know, at, close to its MSRP. Whispered words. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there is that. So um, what we're looking at here is basically a card with a little more power demands than a typical ten eighty Ti. It has um, two connectors on the top there for uh, power supply. It's uh, two eight pins. The uh, standard Founders Edition of the 1080 um, Ti takes a 8-pin and a 6-pin. It's kind of toppling over, so I'm going to keep my finger on it there. Um, there's also a, a bit of RGB action going on al along the top here since we got it installed. Yeah, got, got a nice RGB strip there, and I believe the uh, logos also light up. Um, and uh, basically, you know, it's like, a, like any other 1080 Ti. It's got the same GPU in there as the Titan X. Um, you've got uh, 11 gigs of memory. This actually has the upticked, I believe, um, uh, let me check my notes here. It's the 11 gigahertz memory. I think at some point there was a shift over from, you know, I think about a gigahertz less with a lot of the Pascal cards mm. earlier this year. So this actually is the faster version of the GDDR5X memory. Um, and comes, like I said, with three modes. You don't have to mess around with overclocking. You just put it on the OC mode. Like it, yeah. yeah, and, you know, just run with it. So it's a... Uh, yeah, it's about as high end as things come and are not tight. Uh, yeah, I'm a little envious right. of its existence. Right, it yeah. About, and the thing is, I mean, there are other three fan 1080 uh, Ti cards out there, but a lot of them have a small fan in the middle and uh, two on either side. This thing is just all out. It's just go, goes well, for it. Yeah, yeah. so um, um, I don't think you're going to see a bigger or better um, no. you know, GTX 1080 out there or you know, maybe something close. Yeah. We, How much does this retail for again? So $7.99 um, MSRP. We'll see what it actually does sell for sure. once it hits the market. You know, we'll see how long it lasts on Newegg um, once it hits um, next week. And um, yeah, if you don't want to mess around with you know, having to you know, sort of work in the overclocking utilities, just mm -hmm. go in, click OC mode or gaming mode. Um, the um, one uh, aspect of this I didn't touch on is that there's also a mode called uh, Zero Frozer. Um, Frozer is, um, you know, MSI's lingo for their uh, cooling uh, gear on here. The uh, zero Frozer mode, when the GPU is not being stressed, 
um, turns off the fan, so it runs quietly. Gotcha. So, um, so you can when, play hard, stay silent. I gotcha. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Right. Oh, right. I was supposed to be quiet. Yeah. So yeah. So um, this is hitting next week. We're going to be uh, benching it um, over the next week or two, and have a full review up on Computer Shopper. Um, there you have it. The uh, Gaming X Trio version of the GTX 1080 Ti. It's a beaut. Uh, it's a beaut. Um, make room in your case because. It's big. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Basically, take your Razor Blade Stealth, stick it in your case. <laughs> yeah. You're probably going to be all right. Yeah. Yeah. So there we have it. So that's all we have for this week. A um, couple of weeks, we'll be doing cool. um, another one of our um, all out uh, PC builds. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be building a wall mounted gaming PC. Oh, yeah. Which will be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, I think we're aiming for November 9th on that, that in a few weeks. That is the plan. Yeah. So stay tuned for that. Yes. And um, in the meantime, we're going to get these things back into the lab, start benching them, having a bit of fun with them, yep. and um, yeah, getting up the reviews. So look out for reviews on PC Mag for um, the Razer laptops. Yep. They'll appear there first and probably this on Computer Shopper. Indeed. And uh, I think that's all we have for today. Thank you for watching. Yeah, this has been Random Access. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Matthew Buzzy. This is John Buer. Tune in next time. Leave a like, leave a comment, leave a share, do whatever you want. Uh, see you next time. All right, bye.